And in terms of what types of activities you can do this summer, I myself have been thinking of taking a vacation before the summer is over. And I was scratching my head trying to figure out where to go and what to do. So I asked myself three questions. The first is, where are you going? So you definitely don't want to go to a state that has disease activity that's going up rapidly, like Florida, Texas, or Arizona. So try as much as you can to either stay within your local community, or if you're traveling farther, then go to a state where the, the activity is going down. The second is, how are you going to go? So you really want to think about how you're going to travel, because that's one of the things that can confer the biggest risk is how much contact you have. If you're sitting on a plane for several hours, that's certainly much higher risk than driving in your car uh, with your family and friends just for you know, a few hours in, in a close environment where you're not stopping a lot along the way. And then the last one I asked myself is who? Who are you going with? So where, how, and who? I absolutely and agree with, with Dr. Coley's recommendations, by the way. Looking at where you're going, um, how you're getting there and, and who you're with. Um, and, and the problems are in flying, I mean, the, the problems are where are you going? Because many states have got, have got restrictions that are different from Colorado's. Um, and, and if they are different, you need to understand how different and how are people going to treat you. Um, you've got a, a mandatory mask um, uh, recommendation now in, in Colorado. Many states don't, and you will find that that's, that's a problem. So be very careful. I would, personally, I would not fly anywhere at the moment. Uh, and, and I don't intend to and haven't made any plans to do so this year. So, and so Dr. That, Morris, I would just add, there was actually a survey of physicians on social media asking that same question. And the majority of physicians said the same response as you did, right. that they personally feel unless it's absolutely necessary that it's a risk not worth taking at this time because you're sitting in a, in a closed environment for extended periods of time. When you look at the where am I going to go, where am I going to travel, you are restricted. But if you've got to drive a distance there and are going to have to stop, which many of us will have to along the way, those precautions are, are really necessary. The other question is who? Uh, you know, I have not seen my grandchildren now for nearly a year. Um, some live in the States, some li live abroad. I'm desperate to see them. But I know that I'm putting them at risk. I'm, they're going to put me at risk if, if I travel to see them. <laughs> I, I will add a couple of tips if you do have to travel somewhere with, for compulsory reasons. If you're getting on a plane, it's, uh, data show that it's actually better to sit in the window seat than the aisle seat because you're less likely to have contact from people walking by. Mm -hmm. Try as best as you can to keep your mask on the whole time. So don't snack, don't have drinks don't have those types of reasons to take your mask down. Make sure to wipe down everything that you're touching, including you know, the seat button, the TV controls, uh, anywhere that your head is gonna be, really wipe down that seat back very well because your face and head are gonna be close to that area. So those are sort of the tips for traveling uh, on a plane. If you're traveling and having to stop at public restrooms, try to you know, touch surfaces only using uh, tissue paper or toilet paper. So you're not directly touching door handles or knobs, uh, sinks, and, and try to not use the, the air dryers in the bathroom because those can also aerosolize droplets from others and try to instead use paper towels. And again, use the towel to open the door uh, and sanitize immediately afterwards. And then if you're staying in a hotel, I also have some tips for that. Try to pick uh, a request a room where somebody hasn't stayed for the last few days, if that's possible at all. Uh, decline the housekeeping. So you have one less person coming in and out of your room that's been going into other rooms. And then of course, wipe everything down as soon as you get in there, the remote controls the lamps, uh, all of those types of things that you might be touching frequently. And then in the public spaces, be sure to wear a mask. If you do travel out of state, just think about your Medicare coverage. Think about your health insurance um, and whether in fact you are going to be covered in that state. You're covered clearly for emergencies. That's not really the issue. But if you have an ongoing condition and, and for instance, had to go into a 14 day quarantine when you arrived there, would that be okay? Uh, would that be a problem? So some, just something else to think about. Something else perhaps to put in the equation to say, nah, let's not go now. Let's wait and see how things travel, so things work uh, as far as travel is concerned. Yeah, and hopefully even next if you're, summer will look a little different, but yeah, <laughs> we're still in the thick of it.
I was going to add, even if you're going for a two or three day trip, as Dr. Morris said, be sure to take at least a two to three week supply of medications and any other prescriptions that you might have because you may end up getting quarantined or stuck. 